How do you know when it's time to start applying for jobs? I'm going to give you some guidelines right here, right now, so stay tuned. Hi everyone and welcome my name, oh, that was a big clap. <laughs> Hi everyone and welcome, my name is Anna McDougall, I'm a software engineer here in Germany and today I'm going to tell you about when you might be ready to apply for a job. I know it can be very unclear, especially if you're self-taught or a boot camp graduate or something along those lines. You have learned a few things, you're feeling pretty confident about what you're learning, but you're like, mm, is it too early to apply for a job? Um, is it too late to apply for a job? Hopefully you're not thinking that. Uh, and what are some signs that you might be ready? So I'm going to talk a little bit here about, um, from a web development perspective, um, what sort of things you should already know before applying for a job. What do you do when you think you're ready as well? So those will kind of be the two parts of the video. Uh, I hope you're ready for it. Let's get started. All right, so the first part of the video, as I mentioned, is about what kind of things do you need to know before applying to jobs? Now, from a web development perspective, um, I would expect anyone applying for a junior web development or junior front end role to at the minimum know HTML, CSS and vanilla JavaScript. That is the absolute minimum. Now, I would recommend being at least um, functionally able to use one framework or library from Vue, Angular or React. Ideally Vue or React because Angular is not quite so popular at the moment. Um, so I'm so sorry. I just have the itchiest nose. Oh, oh that, is, that is heaven. That is heaven. So as I was saying, I would also recommend a library or a framework to add to your repertoire. Um, and that is, I would say, the bare minimum. There are some other things that I think would be good for you to know about, especially Git. Learning Git and learning how to use Git is something that to some extent you have to learn on the job because you can't simulate many, many people working on different branches and different tickets to some extent. You have to um, just imagine it, but you should be able to pull, push, um, do a pull request, um, create a branch, merge branches, um, these kinds of basic skills. I do have uh, two blog posts that can help you get started on this if you don't already know anything about Git or GitHub. Um, I'll put it down in the description so that hopefully you can at least get started with that if that's a gap in your knowledge. So those would, I'd say, be the bare minimum of skills that you should know. Um, but I would also add, it's not just about knowing those skills, you should also have, I would say, two to three things you have built with those that you can show people that are finished. Finished is not really a thing, right? Like there's always more you can do, but it should be presentable enough. So it should be working on different screen sizes. It should be responsive in that way. It should be accessible. It should look good. There shouldn't be any major typing mistakes. Um, and it should be in some way fun or interesting. Um, I've spoken about this before in my portfolio video or what to include on your portfolio website. Although things like a calculator and a to-do list app are fine, um, it's more fun for the people looking at your applications if you do something a little bit different and a little bit interesting. So look into that. Um, I would say try to make one of these react with an API in some way as well. Um, you can use something like cat facts or weather APIs are also really great to play around with. So I'd recommend those as well. On that point, you should have a CV and a portfolio site ready to go. But you should have all of these things ready to go before you start applying for jobs. Don't wait until you've applied for a job and then wait for them to say, where's your portfolio? <laughs> I'm laughing because that's what I did. So I'm being a bit of a hypocrite here. <laughs> Oops. But yes, ideally you um, already have a portfolio website ready to go before you're applying for jobs. Um, and then from there, you have kind of this package ready. You have the knowledge and you have what shows your knowledge, right? Okay, so that's 
that's what I would say is step one, the base amount of knowledge and resources that you absolutely need before you can start applying for jobs in web development. All right, let's move on to part two, which is how do you know if you personally are ready or if the job market in your area is ready? Now, this is something that I did really early on. I actually did this before I was even considering applying for jobs, and that is to get in contact with people in your area. So think about the companies that you might want to apply for or have a look at who is advertising for junior web developers and look at who is already working there as a developer. Send them a message on LinkedIn and say, hey, I saw this position is advertised there. I wanted to get a feeling for what you guys are doing. Alternatively, you can also contact recruiters. This is also something I did. I had a telephone call with a recruiter from a local company before I started, even with my course, to say, what do you look for when you're recruiting someone into this field? What do you feel like is the the minimum that you would need to see from me? What proof do you need from me that I could be a good candidate? This does two things. Firstly, it gives you information, right? That's obviously the main goal to tell you what you need for the jobs you're going to apply for. But secondly, it actually helps create contacts with recruiters in your area. And if you're having this chat and you're telling them about what you're already doing, if you get lucky, they might say, hmm, actually, I, I think you could already start applying. Maybe they even give you that directly and they say, okay, well, I'm looking at this or I'm, I'm hearing what you're saying about that and I don't think you need to keep studying or I don't think you need to go back to school or whatever you're considering. Um, I think you can apply now. And even if they don't say that, even if they say, hmm, yeah, I think you're going to need to learn Docker before you apply for a job in this area or something like that. Um, even if they say something like that, you now have a connection to them and then you can go away and learn Docker, become more proficient in it, and then you can come back to them and say, hey, um, I've actually spent the last month learning Docker, really getting much better at it, I'm feeling much more confident, and I've updated my portfolio with this, this, and this. Would you mind taking a look and seeing if you think, um, think it's better now? But just talk to them, you know? I, I think people get really freaked out about recruiters and people in HR and other developers, but they're just people. And usually most people like feeling useful. They like feeling they have something to offer. So if you go to them and say, I want your help and you have this expertise. Can you, can you give me advice? Most people are happy to do that. So don't be freaked out. Just, just ask people. It's, it's that simple. If you have a portfolio website and you want to know, is this good enough to send to companies? tweet it out or like put it on LinkedIn and say, hey, if anyone's got any feedback, I'd love to hear it. Or you might even say something like, if anyone's using an iPhone, I need to check if my portfolio website looks good on an iPhone. Would you mind having a look and taking some screenshots for me? And it just gets people engaging with what you're doing and also gives you information. So that's kind of a more practical way that you can find out if you're ready. But my main piece of advice for finding out if you're ready to apply for jobs is, drumroll please, apply for jobs. Just do it. Just send off like five to ten applications to companies you like who are advertising for juniors or front end or whatever it is that you specialize in and give them your information. Try to follow some of the, the pieces of advice that I give about portfolio websites. Um, there's another video actually I'm just thinking of, which is about tell me about yourself. This, this wide question that we get all the time. Oh no, we're still recording. Oh my God. Thank goodness. We're still recording. My screen went black. So I've got this great video about how to answer, tell us about yourself. Um, and that will also help you to create your CV and your portfolio website and all kinds of things. Uh, so I'll, I'll pop it up there somewhere and, um, you can get started on that. Too. But I would say prepare all this stuff, send it off, see what the response is like. If people are just like, mm, not enough experience, okay, so be it. One of the best ways to get employed is actually to just work for yourself for a little while. Go to local businesses like your local pizza shop, your local cafe. A lot of these shops don't have good websites or they have outdated websites or they have no website at all. Go and offer to them, say, hey, um, 
I'm looking to get some experience creating websites. Would you mind if I get free coffee for a month to create your website or something like that? Um, or just ask them for a hundred bucks or something that is kind of really obvious, obviously a good spend for them. Send out emails to lots of businesses in your area. Tell them what's going on. Send them an example from your portfolio. Say, look, I can create this website. I could make something like that for you. What do you think? Um, and just see what happens. If you create those and you've created actual websites for actual businesses, that's a great selling point for other companies. You know, a lot of the time um, we're ready earlier than we think. So don't be afraid to get started looking if it's not working out or if you get to the technical interview and you're really stumped, um, then you know what kind of things you have to work on. Um, I'm not the only one who will say this and you'll see videos all over YouTube, people who got rejected from Google, who got rejected from Facebook, who did these technical interviews and completely flunked. But in flunking, they learnt what they had to learn and they were able to go away and learn that stuff and then land some other incredible position because of it. Take that risk, put yourself out there, fail a little bit, but take that failure and see it and go, hey, okay, I failed at this, so this is my learning goal now. If you can take that attitude in, then I have no doubt that you will be able to find your first job in tech. I hope that that answers the question about how to know when you're ready to apply for jobs or and giving you some techniques as well for getting ready to apply for jobs as a web developer. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.